are here doing some really, really late coho fishing, but we're gonna try to turn this into a very in-depth egg curing tutorial. A little challenging the land, but he is just smoking. But he's not what I wanted today. <gasps> Hey guys, welcome to another addictive video. We are here doing some really, really late coho fishing, but we're gonna try to turn this into a very in-depth egg curing tutorial. Now, I know we've done a lot of these in the past. We've talked about it a lot in our live feeds on Wednesday nights on Facebook and YouTube, and we've done a lot of videos, but every year there's new products and new techniques and new ideas that kind of come out with the egg curing process. So I've got a bunch of that stuff big, sitting back at home but first we need to go try to get your coho salmon. So it's really late, we just had a big rain. I don't even know if there's a fish in here, so we're looking for one, kind of a classic addictive video, right? We're always just looking for that one, and who knows what happens, but either way, uh, river's in perfect shape, four to five foot of visibility, nice and high, uh, super green, twitching should be on fire if there's a fish. So, let's get at it. a nice late November day. I hope we can find a coho. But we're gonna get down. There's not very many people on the river today. We're just gonna get down to some of the juicy spots and see what we can find. Not gonna waste my time fishing a lot of this real high water. Fish are gonna be moving today, but there should still be a few spots if they're around where they're gonna be holding. So we're just gonna kinda set up on those juicy spots. Like I said, there's nobody fishing and uh, see what we can find. I haven't seen a twitching jig like that before, has it? Probably won't work. Why not? What's good is that there's obviously no fish. Mm. He got him. He got it. Oh, he's running at me. This might be a little challenging to land, but he is just smoking. That's a giant. I think it's a big buck though, so I don't know if it's gonna do us any good for today. Here he comes, here he comes. I got him finally. Oh, it's a big buck. Oh, the wrong kind, but look at that one. Just a stud. He just ate that jig too. Holy cow, look at the mouth on this coho. It's a coho, guys. Look at this thing. Oh, darn, it's a hatchery one. I could keep him if I wanted him. Ha <laughs> Here's my net. Let's give you a little bit of a challenge. A little bit of a challenge. Just an absolute dog. No wonder he kicked my butt. Ooh, got him. I got him. <laughs> but he's not what I wanted today. <gasps> nope. Okay, I don't got him. Please tell me you don't got that on film. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My net's not big enough for him. Get in the boat. Holy shoot, guys. Holy cow. Okay, guys. All right. Big hatchery fish. I could keep him today, but we're after a hen for you guys. And you know what? I'm just gonna let him go and darn it, that close, super late. Nobody here. Just smoking that jig absolutely rocked me. I think, you know, the, the water was a little dirtier today, so I tied a, a straight braid. Just kind of blackened out the couple feet there. Too bad that wasn't a hen. We'd be able to continue with our tutorial, but I bet he's got a girlfriend back there. Oh, dang it, you guys. Such a nice one, too. Just a stud fish. I mean, fishing late in the season for the bee runs, generally that's when you get your bigger cohos. That thing had that... <laughs> Couldn't even tell where that jig was. It was down his freaking throat. Man. All right, guys, back from the river. As you guys can see, I failed. I caught that really nice hatchery buck. Didn't want to really bring a salmon home today, so I let him go. Hopefully one of you guys out there caught him or he made it to the hatchery because that was a really nice fish. I'd like to see his uh, offspring there too. But 
We're still gonna do an egg curing tutorial because I've got this big, beautiful bag of skeins right here from the river a couple days ago. But to get eggs to this point, from actually catching the fish and bringing them home. I kind of want to show you guys a couple more things because there's some real important factors that are going to be coming up right now. So since I didn't catch you guys a hen in the earlier part of this video, we're out here doing a little filming today on this beautiful sunny December day. We got Blair skiing in the boat. He just caught this hen for us. So I got a hen in possession, but I do want to show you guys the importance. Um, we just bonked this fish, just netted. It's a keeper fish for us on this fishery. And what I'm gonna do right away, literally bonk this fish just about a minute ago, if that, I'm gonna reach in there with a pair of scissors and I'm gonna cut one of these gill rakers. Now, you can cut more than one, but the reality is, is once you cut one of those gill breakers, the fish's blood pressure is gonna go to zero. You can already see he's bleeding right here. And now what I wanna do before I throw him in an ice bath or I throw him in the cool or somewhere where the fish isn't gonna move around, I wanna hook him up to something. I've got this handy little hook on the side of my raft. If it's a bleed bucket in the boat, whatever it might be, it's much better to keep this fish somewhat submerged in water so you give an opportunity for the blood to drain out because ultimately that's gonna get more blood out of your eggs than anything else. So we've been hanging here for about 10, 15 minutes. There's not much blood left in the fish. And now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pack this fish on ice. It's a really cold day. You can see I'm bundled up right now. Uh, so I got a little bit of ice in our kill bag, but you know, you don't wanna have these fish getting beat up, sliding around the bottom of the boat, getting worked on where people can maybe even step on the eggs and smush them. Like if we're trying to protect the fish, it's gonna help protect the eggs. So now I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna stack in my addicted kill bag and I'm gonna take them to the ramp. All right, last time you guys saw me, we were bleeding that fish out that we caught in the raft. I got her in the bag, and one thing I did is I put her in a cooler or I put her in a kill bag, something that the fish wasn't gonna get stepped on, wasn't gonna get beat up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the eggs from the fish. I do recommend leaving the fish whole until you get to like your garage or where you're gonna cure the eggs. Um, that's ideal, but a lot of times, you know, we don't wanna bring the mess home. We wanna fillet our fish or clean our fish or give some to a buddy or whatever it is at the boat ramp. So as you can see, here we are. And basically all I'm gonna do is take my fish here, use a little water, and uh, I'm gonna start by taking my knife, go right into the vent here, and cutting straight up the belly, keeping the knife very shallow. I'm not going straight in. That's gonna damage and cut those eggs open. I'm gonna go super shallow, run it up the belly, and get where it's opened up. You guys can see I didn't cut those eggs up. And now I'm gonna just take my knife and remove a little bit of this real soft membrane, trying not to tear it. And then I wanna reach up in there, take my knife and free them from the top of that, top of the guts right there. So there is a beautiful skin of eggs. One thing about the eggs is when you do remove them from the fish, you wanna keep them dry. You don't wanna let them just sit there and soak in water or soaking whatever. So I've got some paper towels in a bag here. You don't have to be that fancy with the paper towels, but if you're gonna go a long period of time, you just don't want those eggs to sit in like a ton of moisture, right? Cause it's just gonna make it soft. They're gonna start to water harden. Um, so once I remove them from the fish, I'm gonna throw them in the bag and then I'm gonna take that bag and place it in my cooler, but not on direct ice. If you put them on direct ice, it's, if you put them on direct ice, it causes the eggs to gel and then they don't take the cure as readily. Um, so once again, I'm going to keep them dry, I'm going to keep them protected, and I'm going to keep them off water and ice until I get back to my garage. So we're back in the garage. We've transported our eggs nice and safely. And as you can see here, they are beautiful. They don't have any extra moisture, no blood. We bled those fish really quick, so we got most of the blood out of it. Um, there's a little bit of blood, as you can see, just in these lines here, but we're not going to worry about those amounts because uh, honestly, you're just going to waste too much time and I have, I have not seen that amount of blood really affect anything. So I'm just going to sort them all out, um, get everything into a colander here so I know uh, exactly how many eggs I'm working with because I'm going to do a couple different cures. So we're going to do a basic jar method today and one thing I talked about in the introduction was that, you know, every year there's like new cures and new scents and kind of new techniques and stuff that come out. Um, I have a ton, just from the fall season already, a ton of our Addicted Assassin um, egg cure from Procure, um, already cured up, jarred up, ready to go for spring season. Um, this is the Procure Red Hot Double Stuff. 
But one thing I'm gonna feature today is Keith Archer's Ultimate Egg Cure. And this is made by Procure. And honestly, I've been using it a little bit later in the season and have been having great success with it, but I don't have a big stock of um, this cure in my freezer yet. So I'm gonna take about half these eggs and today we're gonna be using this. But the methods are gonna be fairly similar um, for all these cures. The times might be different on cure time or maybe when you wanna add a little bit of dye or something to make the eggs pop a little bit because some of these cures are more, the colors are more subdued than others. But one thing about this uh, particular cure is Ultimate Egg Cure, it is very bright, a brilliant color egg. So if you like your eggs very vibrant, this is gonna be your go-to. And as far as like on the hotness scale of, um, for something that would be considered hot, that has lots of chemicals and sulfites, like the hottest of the hot would be the Addicted Assassin blend, or kind of like a mid-range cure would be the Red Hot. This kind of fits in that mid-range too, so it's good for salmon, excuse me, it's good for Chinook, good for coho, and good for steelhead too. So we're gonna start with Keith Archer's Ultimate Egg Cure and get going. So like I said in the introduction, there's a lot of new egg cures and new scents and new different techniques every year that comes out. So we've done a lot of egg curing tutorials, but this time I wanna feature the Keith Archer Ultimate Egg Cure. This was an egg cure that was out a while ago. Um, it was fished heavily on some of my local rivers, very productive. I got it late in the season this year, so I've only been able to use it for coho and some late fall Chinook, uh, but it was very productive. So I'm gonna cure our eggs today uh, in a batch of this because I'm gonna wanna have that for spring Chinook and going later on into like early fall Chinook for next season. Basically, I wanna increase my stock in this because I've got plenty of our Addicted Assassin blend and I've also got plenty of the uh, Procure Red Hot Double Stuff. So I have a lot of eggs to do here. I'm gonna show you guys something that I do um, and it's not recommended without any practice because you could probably literally cut your fingers off. But what I'll take is my whole skein here. I don't want to just add cure to this because there's a membrane on three sides of this egg and it's not going to give um, the opportunity for the cure to penetrate into all the little eggs that are wrapped up in this bunch. So what we do is we butterfly these skeins open and I kind of do it a little bit differently than most and like I've shown in other videos but I'll just grab the skein in the palm of my hand and take a knife and just very carefully just slide it down the skein. What I'm doing there is I'm opening that membrane up to allow more egg cure to get into all the eggs buried in the skein, but I'm also not damaging the, the membrane because when I put this on my hook a little later on, this is going to be what's going to be holding those clusters of bait together. So I'm doing whatever I can to not damage this stuff. So once I have that opened up, I'm going to go to my curing container and I'm going to cut this skein into about thirds. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I don't want to go too small because if I'm fishing big baits and the water's up, maybe I'm going to the river and it's really muddy, really high, and I'm going to want to fish a big bait. I don't want to be having to be put like two of those on there and having the membrane all in one chunk um, is going to help those eggs stay on the hook. So if I want a big, big bait, something that's like maybe bigger than a golf ball even, I'm going to want to make sure that I don't cut them smaller than that. I can always cut those smaller before I go to the river or when I'm at the river. So I'm gonna start with a fairly big chunk when I add it into there. If you don't wanna do the knife technique, you can also take your scissors, go up into the membrane, and just kind of cut up the middle. But again, I'm not cutting, see the back side of this? I'm not cutting that membrane that's actually holding all those together. I'm just going in there and just butterflying, opening that whole skein up. We'll go back over here and then we're gonna cut them into thirds again. I've got about half my eggs in there. One thing I don't wanna do is just too big of a batch without doing a lot of practice um, with the amounts of cure that you're gonna use because I find that sometimes if I start doing, you know, gallon size containers like I, you know, I either have a really good week of fishing or I have a bunch of buddies or I bought some from the commercial guys, whatever it may be. Um, curing eggs in really big batches sometimes ends up with like raw spots and spots that the cure doesn't penetrate all the way through when you're mixing them up and trying to roll them over and trying to get that process to happen to all the eggs. You basically end up with raw spots in the eggs. And if that happens, basically those are eggs that are gonna rot. And the last thing you want is a rotting egg uh, mixed up with all your other eggs, it's gonna put off a bad scent. It's something that probably the fish aren't gonna like. So that's the one thing 
I'm gonna stress is do batches that are manageable. I probably got about a pound to two pounds of eggs in there. Um, that was about half the eggs that were in that jar, in that bag originally. And this is what I'm gonna start with. So in this container, I've got two pounds of eggs. One thing with this cure is it's one ounce of cure to one pound of eggs. So I'm gonna take the sprinkle side and I'm just gonna start to liberally layer a coating of this Keith Archer Ultimate Egg Cure on top of that. You guys want you to get a good look at that. One thing I'm gonna say guys, when it comes to curing eggs, a lot of times it's not an exact science. But one thing I will say is if you're still trying to figure it out or trying to, or you're new to this or just trying to experiment with different cures, add a little bit, mix, kind of watch it, check it out. Because one thing you're gonna see is within just a few short minutes, we're gonna show you that here in a moment, you'll start to see the results of that cure already dyeing the eggs and already juicing the eggs out. And you can always add more cure to your eggs. You can't ever take it away. If you add too much cure and you just add just gobs and gobs and gobs, what ends up happening is the eggs like will take some of the cure and instead of it kind of like neutralizing and kind of blending and like equaling out, the cure will just kind of keep curing the eggs. And that's where you'll always will end up with like the mushy egg product. And we see that question all the time. How do I get my really mushy soft eggs that are like goopy? How do I firm them up? A lot of times, You've done the damage and there, there's a couple things you can do. You can dry them out, you can put them in borax, but the reality is, is once you get that real goopy egg because you've over cured it, it's very, very difficult to fix. So you can already see in just the time that I'm talking here, take a look at that. That cure is already starting to soak into the egg. You can kind of see like up in here and I'm gonna start, but what I wanna do is I'm gonna wanna mix this thoroughly. I'm gonna do that right now just with my hand. So I like mixing my eggs this way because I feel like I get a more consistent um, mix up of the cure within all the eggs. I don't end up with those raw spots or the spots that don't get as cured as others. seems like if I do the jar method and you mix them up, um, you know, sometimes that cure doesn't get to all the spots necessary. So this way I kind of ensure that there's nothing wrong with the jar method. I've done it a bunch too, but if you're, like I said, if you're checking out this tutorial because you're trying to figure out, um, um, trying to get a more consistent egg, or you're trying to get your like your first eggs done, um, I would recommend having a little larger container and just kind of folding and rolling the eggs over. I'm not being really aggressive, but I'm just kind of rolling the eggs over in the cure. And already it looks like, you guys can see how pretty that is. I hope you can see that on camera. You can already see like the cure's already blended into the eggs. Um, Honestly, I probably am not gonna need any more cure, but just on the side of caution, I know I said, I know I said don't add too much, but I am just gonna put one more just light layer on there just to make sure. And then I'm gonna mix again. All right, they're nice and mixed up. You can see the cure is everywhere. If I pick up one of the skeins and kind of open it up, I'm, I'm gonna see cure. I'm not gonna see like really pale spots that the cure did not reach. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put these in a cool place to cure. These eggs, um, even with the other, with the Red Hot Double Stuff and our Assassin Cure, they, they tend to cure a little better if you don't put them in refrigerators that are really close to freezing. You want cool, but you don't want super cold, but also cool is not your 75 degree garage uh, in the middle of September. So um, right now it's the middle of November. Things are pretty cool, about 50 degrees. I'm not even gonna put these in the fridge. I'm just gonna leave these out. I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna cover these up. But if you allow the eggs to stay in that kind of 40 to 50 degree temperature, they take the cure really well. It speeds up the process a little bit and you get a more consistent egg. Okay. So my eggs are set up for tonight. Every 12 to 24 hours, you're gonna to wanna to go buy those eggs and remix them back up. Or if they're in a jar, you're gonna to wanna to turn them upside down and shake them. But you're gonna to wanna to kinda of remix that, uh, that juice that's gonna be coming out of those eggs. And then also that's ensuring that that um, cure is getting to all those spots that maybe you didn't get in the mixing. Again, trying to make sure that the eggs are really consistent and that you're not gonna have those raw spots we talked about. Um, I am really excited about this cure and if you guys are curious what um, this, Cure is going to be used for. When I was talking to Steve Lynch over at Pre Procure, he was saying that Keith's Cure kind of runs the same hotness level as like a red hot double stuff. And what does that mean? 
Hotter isn't necessarily better. Hotter means there's more sulfites, there's more chemicals in it. And there are times of years where certain cures work better than others. Um, if you're looking for a good mid-range, something that's gonna be, I've seen Keith talk how good this is for steelhead. Um, having a mid-range cure and one that's not super hot is gonna be better for steelhead. But it's also gonna work good for springers and good for Chinook. Probably a better like cooler water egg versus fishing maybe like 72, 75 degree stuff in the Columbia. So that's why I'm gonna do a whole bunch of this stuff in there. And whether you're using this or Addicted Blend or a Procure Blend, if you're a guy that goes out fishing, you wanna have more arrows in your quiver. You do not wanna to go to the river the one day with the one egg cure and not have that be the certain kind of chemical composition that the fish wanna bite that day. Or else you get to watch everybody else catch fish. One pair of pants later. So after we set up those eggs and put them on the workbench, it stayed real cool in the garage. We waited 24 hours. Actually, Alex and I went and did a little more filming today um, to, for you guys, but I've got the batch of eggs that I've done right here, I just kind of covered them up, keep any bugs and keep like air circulation from drying them out a even more. As you can see, those look awfully freaking good. I'm gonna give them a little stir, but you can see just how brilliant red those are coming out. Now, one thing with the Ultimate Egg Cure, and honestly with the Addicted Cure as well too, you might want to do multiple days. Um, with Keith, he recommends three days of constant um, letting the cure work into the eggs, mixing it up, stirring it, mixing it up for about every 12 hours, giving it a shake, giving it a turnover if you're in the jars, or if you're doing it in a little bucket like this, kind of gently giving them a stir. But what we're gonna do, just to speed up the process, I don't want to come talk to you guys in 48 hours from now. I'm gonna show you guys what we're gonna to do to put these up and store them. So let's pretend I've waited three days, 72 hours for this ultimate egg cure to really seep into the eggs. I've mixed it up every 12 to 24 hours, whether it was the Addicted or the Procure Red Hot Double Stuff. There's at a point where you're gonna to wanna to run um, and you're gonna to wanna to strain off the extra juice that are gonna be on the eggs. Now, what I have set up here is I got a little piece of chicken wire that I just bent it up over um, around the edges of a container. And all I gotta do is take my eggs and I'm just gonna set it on these containers to dry. This isn't just straight chicken wire. This has a little bit of a plastic coating on it because you generally, when you're curing something, you don't wanna cure um, against metal or have stuff that's like untreated, like raw metal. It can do some stuff chemically to the eggs and to the metal to cause it to rust. And it's probably putting some of that chemical reaction like back into the eggs. So, just to be aware and just to be safe, we use plastic containers, glass containers, or stuff that's plastic coated like this chicken wire. Another thing that I wanna stress, another thing that I wanna say is you gotta pay attention to like your dry times and your cure times because depending on how much humidity is in the air, the temperatures um, in the garage, outside, when the fish uh, were caught, brought back, a lot, of that is, uh, a lot of that adds a bunch of variables to how dried out or how cured the egg is gonna get. So as much as I wanna sit here and say, oh, you wanna cure these eggs for three days and then I wanna put them on this grate and I wanna let them dry for exactly six hours before I jar them up, that's really gonna become something that you have to start kind of paying attention to as far as like the tackiness of the eggs, which is something I can't really show you on video, but understanding that those eggs might dry out a little bit faster or a little bit longer depending on the ambient temperature and humidity. So um, for right now, just for demonstration purposes, I showed you guys the chicken wire. I would probably let these dry about four to five hours. Um, coming out here, maybe rotate them, um, making sure that all the juices get off of them. But when I store them, I generally like to have a little bit wetter egg when I put them in the freezer. So if I'm gonna fish these in a few days, I might wanna dry them out a lot more because they're gonna fish better when I'm casting them or I'm hover fishing them or drifting them, whatever I'm doing. A little drier egg is gonna be more durable, but if I'm gonna do long-term storage, like let's say, you know, these are coho eggs and I wanted to use them for springers later on, but I know I'm gonna freeze them. I like to freeze them in a little bit of a wetter state. I think it protects them a little better um, over the long period of time before I defrost them out and then I go fishing with them. Now, when it comes to storage, guys, I always recommend the quart mason jars that are glass. I can tell you, um, these protect it. They're not going to get squished like if you store these in a Ziploc bag in your freezer. That constant hitting of 
items that are gonna be smashing that bag down, even in the frozen state, it's just gonna cause those eggs to turn to mush by the time you defrost them. So having them in a rigid container like this, that's gonna be protected. And then of course it's glass, so you're not gonna permeate any like colors or chemicals or scents or any kind of funk into like the plastic as you would not with glass. So let's pretend that I've dried these off. They're the tacky, they're the consistency that I want. I'm just gonna stack these into the jar. I'm not gonna get super fancy with it, but I'm not gonna fill it basically to the top where it's tough to get the lid on. Because remember, when things freeze, they tend to expand just a little bit. We don't want to have that lid pushing down tight on that, but we also don't wanna have a lot of air in there because as air just sits in a jar, it oxidizes the eggs, you cause it to freeze or burn. So what we're gonna do is, oh, I almost got a perfect quart there, guys. Look at this. Mash them down. I'm not pressing them into the jar. I wouldn't want to do that, but that is like, wow. I don't know how I did that perfectly, but maybe we're good at demonstrating here today. So you can see, got that jar nice and full. I'm just going to screw the lid and then I'm going to label it up and put exactly what I put on the jar. Steve Lynch from Procure one time came into the live feed and was talking about how everybody would put codes on their lids in their jars and then promptly forget the code like a year later. So for me, I would put UEC, Ultimate Egg Cure, I'd probably put Coho Eggs, and then you know 2023 when I'm putting these eggs up, just so I have a good solid track of when and what I have in this jar. Now another thing I'm not gonna do is a lot of people will put the uh, wax paper or the piece of paper that's lit on fire into the top of the jar and then promptly close the lid. And what that does is it burns the oxygen out of the jar. Like I said, we were trying to avoid that oxidation um, on the eggs. However, I also don't really like to introduce other foreign smells like that burning paper or that into the top of the egg. So I try to avoid that. Um, I've talked in depth with some of the guys over at Procure. They don't recommend doing it either. Um, you know what, if you've been doing it for 40 years and you've been whacking fish on eggs, well, you're probably not even watching this tutorial, but the reality is if it's working for you, do it. But for me, it's kind of um, a mute point. I don't wanna do that, but I do wanna fill that nice and not super tight to the top. Again, put the lid on it, label it, and throw it in the freezer. Now, one thing you've noticed that I have not talked about yet, there's all these additives that I could add to my eggs to make them better, make them fish differently, you know, in different parts of the seasons and different temperatures. This is not the step that I'm gonna add a lot of these different chemicals and scents right now because even stuff like sardine oil is actually kind of like corrosive to the eggs and can turn the eggs, which eventually would eat away at the membranes. So I, what I like to do is I generally like to cure my eggs for preservation. So I cure them up, I catch them in one season, I wanna use them in the next. I use some different base of those preservatives but then I put them in the freezer. And then as I get into the seasons and depending on the water temperatures and again, the flavor, what's been working, whatever it might be, I can then add a lot of these different things, whether it's tuna powder, sardine oil, garlic oil, anise, slamola powder, monster bite, they all have their time and place. But if I cure all my eggs with like, let's say a garlic plus or garlic oil, well then I only have garlic eggs and there are times where fish are probably just not gonna be that attracted to the garlic scent. And as temperatures change, certain scents kick on, certain scents kick off, certain chemicals kick on, certain chemicals kick off. There's a reason why when guys go to the river, sometimes there's 20 guys fishing eggs, but there's two guys catching them all because they've got that right combination of chemicals and scent and maybe some extra bait, whether it be you know, some of those chunk baits we see, sand shrimp, tuna, sardines, on top of those. So I generally like to have the blank slate when I take this out to go fishing. And what I'm gonna do is the day before I go, I'm gonna take this out, give it some ample time to defrost. I don't wanna like damage the eggs when I'm taking them out of the jar and they're having like half defrosted, frozen in the middle and whatnot. I'm gonna take them out and that's when I'm gonna start getting creative and adding some of these things that you see here too. Now, one thing great about Procure is they have a ton of different products that you can add to your eggs, but the only thing that I'm gonna add to the eggs prior to putting them in the freezer and during the curing process would be any extra color. They make some badass bait dye, and as you can see, these jars are hammered because this is my actual workbench. This is where I'm actually curing my eggs for my clients all year. Um, <laughs> these aren't the pretty little studio bottles that never get used. You can see this thing's been hammered, but this is the Procure Badass Bait Dye in the Brilliant Red pink, blue, they've got every color under the sun. 
but coloration and adding up to your eggs, certain cures tend to cure eggs a little more um, a little more bland color. It's more of a pigment kind of dye versus than just like a straight like liquid dye. And those baits aren't gonna bleed as much, but they're not gonna take on that real brilliant red color. So adding a little preda badass bait dye um, really can get you there. They also make a hot pink as well and an orange. Um, adding, playing with those colors would be the only thing that I'm gonna add um, to these eggs during the curing process. All right, Addix, there you go. Egg curing tutorial 101. This is a very basic process, but if you guys wanna see us go even more in depth than we already have, or you think that we've missed some certain aspects of curing eggs, put that in the comments below and we'll create other tutorials. Maybe we'll turn this into a series. If there's other tutorials that you guys wanna see, we'd love to help you out. If we have any knowledge or any idea of what we're doing, we'll put it out there for you guys. So like I said, use that comment uh, section down below and let us know what you guys think what you wanna see, and uh, if we missed anything in this tutorial, or honestly, if it helped you out and uh, maybe gave you guys some different ideas. I hope you guys are having a lot of success in the field. I hope you guys catch a nice big hand, cure some eggs, and go whack some spring chinook or some fall chinook with it later, and we'll see you guys out there. Always something different. Different? What's different? You're different. I'm different. So there you have you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna use that, aren't you? Hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, yeah, hey guys. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you can't, cause I don't think I said that at all today. I don't think I said it. I didn't say it here either. All right, guys. Hey guys. All right, guys. All right, guys. All right, guys. All right, guys. Dang it, you guys. So like I was saying in the introduction, guys. So there you have it, an egg curing tutorial, guys. I hope. Mm, I said guys. All right. One more time. Final take.